Valued viewers, the 25th of September is being praised and celebrated in our mainstream media as a great success for U.S. President Barack Obama. Together with the highest advisory committee in the UN Security Council, a binding anti-terror resolution was voted in unanimously. This resolution now obligates all 193 UN member countries to strictly suppress the financing and recruiting of all unwanted groups aspiring for government. For example, the self-proclaimed Association Islamic State and other so-called terrorist organizations. All countries who do not comply with this are now threatened with sanctions. The dimensions, according to Obama, are shocking. More than 15,000 foreign fighters have joined the so-called terror militia Islamic State. This new terror resolution should also be viewed in light of our short documentary film, How Do Modern Wars Work? Among the eight steps mentioned there, especially steps five and six, are important to take note of. First, let us review steps one to four. In the first step, the country to be taken over is destabilized by every possible means. In a second step, all the dissatisfied groups ready for violence inside and outside of the target country are recruited, from hooligans to religious extremists. In the third step, the groups are trained, supplied with weapons, and paid to overthrow the government all the while being promised attractive participation in power over the liberated country. In a fourth step, the aggressor begins to attack. His goal is to get as much attention as possible all over the world and create a global cry for help. Further, I quote now from step five, points six and seven, which is what is currently happening retreat of the troops, leaving the country to itself in order to provoke total chaos, renewed radical intervention to remove all the previously used heroes, who are now called nothing less but terrorists. And this is exactly where we are now, with this new anti-terror resolution. Usually the UN Security Council consists of diplomats, people who are barely known to the public. But this time the players are called Obama, Hollande, Kirchner, Erdogan, and Cameron. This is merely the sixth time in its history that the most influential arm of the UN has met with it, its highest advisors. This was used by the US president as a clear signal that the merciless hunting season is opened against all who were previously promised positions of power. Let us never forget what ex-CIA agent Stephen Kelly stated on August 28th to Press TV. The IS militia is a completely self-created enemy. The financing comes entirely from the USA and their cohorts. We created this enemy ourselves. In other words, the fighters of Islamic State, short IS, were until recently welcome partners of the USA in the fight against Assad's government in Syria. When this war is stagnated, however, the IS could be deployed elsewhere, for instance, for the mass murder of the Jesidis, a Kurdic religious minority in northern Iraq. And just this operation provoked the cry for help of the relatives that was heard all through Europe. Exactly this cry offers now a perfect justification for a new intervention by the USA. When will we finally understand that this modern way of warfare is practiced by the self-appointed US world police all over the world? The current anti-terror resolution of the UN Security Council obliges all 193 UN members to fight against exactly what the US warmongers have been practicing themselves solely as the only role model, terrorist tourism. It's been proven irrefutably that in all crisis countries, the USA themselves have hired and deployed terrorist mercenaries from the interior and from abroad. However, these destabilized populations, for instance the Russian-oriented people in Ukraine, have learned a lesson precisely from this terrorist tourism. The public media intentionally covered up the fact that the so-called pro-Russian separatists actually threatened Ukrainian citizens, forced the armies of the terrorist Ukrainian government to their knees exactly through this same fighter tourism. 
Following this program, please watch a part of the press conference in which the U.S. orchestrated military was called to retreat because their power had been broken. So it was not some saving U.S. peace apostle who finally could generously guide the war back into a diplomatic course. It was the tough upper hand of the Russian-Ukrainian population who had laid low the terrorist military. And this was because voluntary fighters from many countries came to chase away the U.S. orchestrated terrorist armies. It's for this reason, and no other, that Barack Obama now forces all 193 UN member states to intervene against this so-called terrorist tourism. Frankly speaking, now all of the UN member states have to do the job of the US warmongers, terrorist mercenaries. Also countries such as Germany get under pressure to tighten their penal laws according to the new resolution in order to be able to participate in this terrorist hunt. From now on, they have to criminally prosecute citizens who wish to travel abroad for terrorist purposes or who are returning home from terrorist camps. And this raises the next question. How do you recognize a tourist who is about to take part in a terrorist operation? Perhaps by his Kalashnikov and his ammunition belts that he has strapped to his chest while crossing the border? Or maybe by the hand grenades and the mines which he openly transports in his luggage? Or maybe you recognize him as a terrorist tourist because he penciled his reason for traveling on the pre-printed paper he received from the airline. For example, travel destination, jihadist training camp in such and such, or terrorist attack against American military base. Not very likely. So it is obvious that from now on every unwelcome person could be suspected of terrorist tourism while leaving or entering a country. As experience has shown, innumerable politically incorrect people are being held in penitentiaries of all sorts, just like Guantanamo. Already people who are merely falsely accused are locked up for years, without legal support or the chance at competent defense. Would you, dear viewers, like to be in their place? Whoever doesn't want this, stand up and inform your surroundings. Recommend all of the informative broadcasts here on Klagemauer TV or whichever you can find. Only spreading the clarifying connections and background information can support the growth of the only thing that can go up against this warmongering world power. Nations who say no to war, no to the dishonest methods of the U.S. warmongers. This is the only way that step six in our documentary can be prevented because in the end, the aggressor will also want to be celebrated. Watch this short documentary, Modern Wars, How Do They Work? Over and over again and pass it on. Have a good evening. We have begun to test all these troops in combat. Yesterday we started an attack on the enemy troops in Amvrosnivka. According to our information, the enemy lost 45 pieces of military equipment during the strike. We took over 14 pieces of the equipment. And about 1,200 persons were wounded or killed. At the moment there are two encircled areas in Amvraznivka and in Starobesheveskaya. Since 4 a.m. we are closing in on Elenovka, where fighting is still going on.
Two thirds of Elenovka are under our control. We hope to have cleaned up these areas before this evening. Well, anyway, the offensive will not end with this. We will continue it until we have delivered all the inhabited regions of the People's Republic of Donetsk. The army is ready and we have the support from the people. There are going to be more and more captives. Well, concerning the parade, I set the equipment on the Lenin Square as trophies, on purpose. Everything coming to us from Kiev will sooner or later end in this state. The more will come, the easier it will be for us to rebuild our economy. As you know, the steel industry is one of our central industry branches. Poroshenko said that of the 1,200 taking part in the parade in Kiev, 120 went into the east of the country. Now I tell you, I don't want to fight. I don't want to kill anyone. It wasn't my choice. But for my country I'll fight to the end, no matter against whom, when and in what number. This is a battle of destruction. Unfortunately the Slavs are fighting amongst each other and are destroying their best people. We want to reach all the relatives and mothers. Do not send your sons here. Leave us alone. Let us live freely and in peace. We did not come to you to Kiev, Dinopetrovsk, to Saporoshye. It's not us who plunder your villages, rape your women, kill your old ones and steal your military awards. Do you remember the awards for Stalingrad, the capture of Berlin, the Gold Star Medals, the awards of glory, the glory of the Red Banner mingled with women's earrings? We do not do things like that. We want to live in our country the way we want to. We don't need you. We are different. Western and Eastern Ukraine is an artificially created conglomerate. But we didn't start this war. If somebody has a political conscience, the will and the courage of a real man, I would suggest to him to end this operation. You don't have to accept our status, simply leave us alone, inside the borders of the People's Republics Donetsk and Lugansk, and we kiss you goodbye.